Shri Guru Bhionama. A warm welcome to the second segment of today's symposium on Vedic spirituality. And the first presentation in the post lunch afternoon session is by Vidwan Jamala Madaka Surinaranji. And uh, he will be speaking on uh, spirituality or Adhyatma from a Yoga Sutra perspective how the function of Shraddha and Bhakti. Uh, functions in from a yoga sutra perspective uh, before we begin uh, i'd like to give a brief uh, introduction to uh, the speaker shri suranaranji is the researcher and educator who is passionate about spreading the knowledge of the shastras he is currently working as assistant professor in mit iks pune and he is also visiting professor at Kavikulaguru Kalidasa Sanskrit University, Ramtek. He has done extensive research on areas such as logic, law, jurisprudence, and Sanskrita. He has published over 15 articles and written several academic papers. He, he was conferred with many awards such as Tarkaratnam and Vidwan Mani by uh, Sri Jayendra Saraswati Swamiji. He was also conferred with the award. Uh, Veda Vidya Varishta by VSR Foundation Hyderabad and Shastra Kalanidhi by the governor, uh, government of Madhya Pradesh. Surinayanji intends to nurture future masters by training people to take Shastric knowledge to the next level. And uh, he has been uh, training people, teaching them for, the, for many years now. Um, thank you for accepting uh, our invitation, uh, Surinayanji and uh, uh, gracing this occasion. So, without uh, further ado, please uh, start your session. The floor is open for you now. Yeah. Uh, namaste, uh, Nitinji. Thank you for your warm welcome. Namaste, everyone. Uh, I want to start this session with a small mangalam. Om Shuklam Varadharam Vishnum Shashivaranam Chatur Bhujam Prasannabadanam dhyayet sarva vigno pashantaye agnyanati mirandhasya jnana anjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha gurur brahma gurur vishnur gurur devo maheshwaraha guru sakshat param brahma tasmai shri gurave namaha shri guru bhyo namaha hari om Namaste all. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts regarding the moksha marga and the functions of bhakti and shraddha in it. So in my talk, <coughs> I will be giving you a brief introduction about the landscape of uh, Bharatiya Shastras. Because to understand what is moksha marga, we need to understand the perspective. And what is where in which kind of a uh, knowledge system this moksha marga is dealt with? So first of all, I will be talking about the different knowledge streams which talk about which uh, which uh, give uh, uh, insights of moksha marga. And after that, I shall I shall guide you through the chronology in which the moksha marga is presented in yoga sutra and what is the place of bhakti and shraddha in attaining that kind of a moksha so first of all i want to give a brief uh, introduction about the knowledge system here the bharatiya vijnanam we call it and the latest uh, trending term for that is iks indic knowledge streams so, uh, our Shastras are mainly of two types. One is Apaurusheya and the second one is Paurusheya. So, in Sanskrit, each and every word has an etymology and there is a lot uh, signifying about, about that concept. So, Apaurusheya means a knowledge stream which is not attributed to one person. For example, if I ask somebody who wrote Ramayana, so the answer will be Valmiki. So, which means that it is a Paurusheya Grantha. 
so it is it is attributed to one person so the uh, kartritvam and bhoktritvam of it will be related to that person but there are some streams which are not attributed to anyone those kinds of streams are called as apaurusheya and generally all vedas are considered to be apaurusheyas so the knowledge streams which came to just protect the structure of these apaurusheya granthas are called as vedangas in which we'll have jyotisha vyakarana and all other granthas which all are again paurusheyas which means that these knowledge streams are attributed to one person again so the apaurusheya knowledge stream is protected are guarded by paurusheya knowledge streams like uh, Ved, uh, vedanga which is actually focusing on the structure of veda but there are certain other streams which are focusing on on actually contemplating on some concepts which are dealt in apaurusheya bhaga or the veda bhaga so it is it can be called as darshanas these streams can be called as darshanas so these are not actually intended to protect the overall structure of veda but it is used to bring out the essence of veda in in different levels for example if i want to if i want to tell a moral <clears throat> to a 10 year kid so my my style of presentation will be different if i want to teach a lesson to a to a grown up so who is around 30 or 35 years old so the pers- the presentation or the samadana bheda danda upaya the upaya i use will be different so the upayas are used according to the maturity of of that uh, listener or or that uh, sadhaka so here the same concepts which are which are uh, uh, enlisted in vedas are dealt in different styles according to the maturity or the uh, style of that uh, seeker the sadhaka hence we have many darshanas so i want to start with what do we have in a darshana so the etymology of darshana is drishyate anena so i am able to see something i am perceiving something because of this so it is becoming my lens to see so seeing is just upalakshana here not only seeing but understanding what is my perspective towards life towards world towards myself all these things are covered in a darshana so see the darshanas parama prayojana or why why do we need darshanas is to define life defining life means not only telling what are the uh, important ingredients of life but how to achieve the um, eternal goal of life also so to do that in all the darshanas so we have many darshanas some darshanas follow vedas from some, some darshanas don't follow vedas so but we are uh, only dealing with uh, those darshanas which follow vedas which are according to vedas which take vedas as uh, as one of the main source they call that as praman so these darshanas are called as astika darshanas astika astika means one who believe that there is after life this is the uh, literal meaning but astika darshanas can be taken as those uh, knowledge streams or philosophies which talk about um, uh, life its problems and how to solve those problems from vaidik perspective so we are only talking about those darshanas now so those darshanas are generally divided into six there are many other uh, divisions also but m- important divisions are six like we have nyaya vaiseshika yoga sankhya purva mimamsa and vedanta and each of two to the yugalas the duals are considered to be alike for example nyaya and vaiseshika are considered to be twins 
yoga and uh, sankhya will be an another, an another yugalam and mimamsa and vedanta are considered to be the third yugalam so they are following similar styles okay so in each of these darshanas we, we may find epistemology or means of knowledge they talk about what are the different means of knowledge why because you need to understand yourself the world and the eternal truth so to understand all these things you need to understand what is the process of knowledge also so every darshana deals with pramana pramana is nothing but the means of knowledge and prameya prameya means the subject of knowledge what are we cognizing so that also should be dealt why because there are certain things that you have to cognize you have to know the truth you have to do the debate to establish truth and everything so you need to know what are the different types of prameyas or subjects of cognition and last but not the least the most important thing what is the prayojanam prayojanam is the purpose what is the purpose of life why are we living why is this uh, karma cycle is enabling us to take birth every time with different abilities why so it is talking about all these three things extensively and each and every darshana has a different perspective towards what is the purpose and also what are what is the means of knowledge and what are the subjects of knowledge in a different way so the relationship between darshana and these three concepts can be taken as anga angi bhava or in english we can tag that as part and whole relationship the so the relationship between part and whole so darshana the study of darshana can be taken as the angi or the whole and parts of this study can be taken as pramana prameya and prayojana okay so we we all know that there are something called purushartha purushasya artha purushartha artha is nothing but the prayojana purpose so purusha is nothing but the seeker or the person who is cognizing he can be called as the purusha so what is the parama prayojana so there are four purusharthas dharma artha kama and moksha so you all know what is dharma artha and kama most of us know also know what is moksha but this moksha is uh, um, dealt or or uh, defined in a different way in each and every shastra so for example if i take uh, nyaya or vaisheshika simply we can talk, we can take that as an anvikshaki so the english equivalent word can be logic so according to uh, vedic logic if we can say so moksha is called as nishreyasam and this nishreyasam is atyantika dukha nivritti so the the absence of last dukha can be last dukha if if the last dukha is destroyed then it is the state of nishreyasam which is which is a subtype of moksha again i am using a relationship called samanya vishesha bhava which is type and subtype so the moksha can be of many types according to each and every darshana so moksha can be called as nishreyasam according to tarkikas tarkikas are nothing but the uh, nayayikas and vaisheshikas the people who follow nyaya tradition and vaisheshika tradition can be called as tarkikas so for them atyantika dukha nivritti is the parama prayojana or the eternal goal for which any seeker is born or any purusha is born so how can somebody attain this atyantika dukha nivritti state so there is a moksha marga so that is why i am saying we need to understand the tradition to understand this moksha marga this moksha marga for the tarkikas is different how see i i can state a sutram from uh, nyaya sutra so this is the first sutra of nyaya sutram which is written by gotama maharshi 
ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಪ್ರಮೇಯ ಸಂಶಯ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನ ದೃಷ್ಟಾಂತ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ವಯವ ತರ್ಕ ನಿರ್ಣಯವಾದ ಜಲ್ಪ ವಿತಂಡ ಹೇತ್ವಾಭಾಸ ಛಲ ಜಾತಿ ನಿಗ್ರಹ ಸ್ಥಾನ ತತ್ವಜ್ಞಾನ ನಿಶ್ರೇಯಸಾಧಿಗಮ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಎನ್ಲಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಮೇಯಸ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟಿಟೀಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವೈ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಎನ್ಲಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದೆಮ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಪದಾರ್ಥಸ್ ದೇ ಕಾಲ್ ಎಸ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಲೀಡ್ ಯು ಟು ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಮಾರ್ಗ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ನ್ಯಾಯ ಸೂತ್ರಂ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ದುಃಖ ಜನ್ಮ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತಿ ದೋಷ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಉತ್ತರೋತ್ತರಾಪಾಯೇ ತದನಂತರ ಪಾಯಾದಪವರ್ಗ ಸಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಅನದರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಇಯರ್ ಅಪವರ್ಗ ಅಪವರ್ಗ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಿನೋನಿಮ್ ಟು ನಿಶ್ರೇಯಸ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನೋ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಪದಾರ್ಥಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಪದಾರ್ಥಸ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಇಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ towards those 16 padarthas when you don't have illusion you don't have papa or punya if you don't have papa or punya you don't have uh, pravritti if you don't have pravritti you don't have agrima janma if you don't have agrima janma and all your sorrows are are experienced in this janma then there is no further sorrow in your life and that is the state of nishrayasam or moksha according to the tarkikas but to its contrary not contrary but there, there is some contrast so this is not the moksha for uh, vedanta vedantins so vedanti says that moksha is atma swarupa avasthiti so knowing yourself without any attributes knowing your real self that is itself is moksha sthiti and moksha sthiti is not attained it is always uh, means it you 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 will not attain see attaining something means which you are not experiencing right now you will be attaining that after doing something but for vedanti moksha is a swarupa it is always with you the only thing is that you are not you are not uh, you are not knowing that you are in that sthiti so that is that is the definition given by vedantis so there are some other people who say that moksha is abhyudaya and abhyudaya is nothing but nairantarya sukha anubhava so here you can find the contrary here atyantika dukha nivritti is means the uh, last uh, uh, sorrows destruction can be taken as moksha but for others it is like continuous experience of sukha sukha sthiti can be taken as abhyadaya but in the sankhya and vega veda yoga darshana we see kaivalyam so this kaivalyam is considered to be the moksha and this kaivalyam has a definition purusha prakriti bheda viveka so again we have to understand sankhya philosophy to actually understand the definition of kaivalyam so the creation starts with the conjunction of purusha and prakriti and this conjunction is not re- real but the illusion of this conjunction is creating the world and a person because of his sadhana if he can understand that purusha and prakriti are different two different entities and that uh, knowledge itself enables him to uh, to to lead towards moksha that is what sankhya philosophy says and the yoga sutras which are written by uh, maharshi patanjali uh, it states that yoga chitta vritti nirodha so yoga is another word used for kaivalyam here and yoga also has another synonym which is called as samadhi so nothing but chitta vritti nirodha is yoga chitta vritti we have to understand what is chitta and what is vritti and what is nirodha nirodha is obstruction or stoppage something like that 
So what are we stopping? What, or the stoppage of what is called as yoga? Vritti. Vritti is nothing but the parinama. Taking another form. So chitta is your mind. Mind is a very uh, small word to actually define the word chitta. Chitta has much other uh, dimensions also to it. But we have less time. So we can take mind as chitta. So chitta parinama or chitta's uh, taking form of other objects is called as chitta vritti. For example, I am seeing my screen while presenting this. So my mind is taking the form of the screen by which I am understanding what is there on my screen. So according to the yoga, yoga darshana and sankhya also, we can only cognize those objects in which, in which form my mind is changing. Only then I can cognize something. If my mind is not forming uh, in the form of a table or a book or a, or a ball, I cannot cognize those objects. So that is the uh, Siddhanta of the yoga. So for them to attain the Kaivalya or the Moksha, the first thing he has to do is Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Chitta Vritti Nirodha is the Prayojaka. Again, I am, I am using one another uh, Sambandha here. I am using some relations which are uh, which are elaborated in Tarka, Tarka Shastra. So, Prayoja Prayojaka Bhava. Prayojaka is the purpose. Okay. So, by attaining Chitta Vritti Nirodha, I can, I can attain Kaivalya. So, Chitta Vritti Nirodha is the first uh, uh, Prayojaka of Kaivalya according to them. And this Chitta Vritti Chitta Vritti is the uh, manifestations of Chitta. So, ch ch the Chitta can manifest itself in, in these types. These are called as Pramana, Viparyaya, Vikalpa, Nidra and Smriti. And each and everything has a very different meaning. So, Pramana is a, a true, uh, true knowledge. You can take as true knowledge. For example, I am cognizing a dog in front of me. That is a kind of a kind of a pramana. That is a chitta vritti visesha. Again, I am using a relationship, samanya visesha bhava, type and subtype relationship. So the first kind of chitta vritti is the true kind of a cognition we have in our daily life. For example, I am hearing something which is happening in any room. That is also a pramana. It is a it is a pratyaksha pramana. So my mind is, uh, is actually cognizing by using my ears. Through my ears, my mind is, is uh, forming in the form of a sound, is changing in the form of a sound and it is cognizing that sound. So that is also a pramana. I am inferring something that is also a pramana. Okay. Uh, and also I am cognizing via language. I am understanding something through language, that is also a pramana. So all these kinds of uh, um, uh, cognition is called as pramana. And other thing where my chitta can uh, uh, change is viparyaya. So mithyajnanam atadrupa pratishtam means, so uh, when I am having an illusion, it can be called as viparyaya. We have vikalpa, nidra and smriti. We have many kinds of Chitta Vritti is also. So, when these all kinds of Chitta Vrittis are, are stopped, that is called Yoga. And another word for Yoga is Samadhi. And this Samadhi is again of types. Sabija and Nirbija. Bija is nothing but cause. So, the Samadhi where I, I have some samskaras with me. There is some memory. So though my memory is not totally erased, but all my um, manifestations of mind are stopped. That kind of a samadhi is called as sabija samadhi. And the other kind of a uh, samadhi is called nirbija samadhi, where my memory is also wiped off totally. There is no change hereafter at all. And this Sabija Samadhi is again of two types. 
samprajnata and asamprajnata. So why am I going through all these types? Because I want to show where bhakti and shraddha is placed in Yoga Sutra. So again, the samprajnata is of many types, vitarka, vichara, ananda, asmita. There are four types and each and everything have again detailed description in Yoga Sutra. Now I want to bring your attention to Shraddha. So to both of these two types of Samadhis, there is a, uh, uh, there is a prescription given by Patanjala Maharshi. So the Sutra is something like this. Shraddha Virya Smriti Samadhi Pragnapurvakaha Itaresham which means that Shraddha, Virya, Smriti, Samadhi and Pragnapurvaka are required to attain this kind of Sampragnata or Asampragnata Samadhi. There, what is Shraddha? So Shraddha is nothing but Shastrasya Guru Vakyasya Satya Buddhya Avadharana Sa Kathita Sadhvihi Yaya Vastu Upalabhyate so because of Shraddha, you are going to attain your purpose. You are fulfilling your purpose. So what is that? Shastrasya Guru Vakyasya Satya Buddhya Avadharana. Avadharana is contemplating and understanding it totally. How Satya Buddhya with truthful uh, view, when you are cognizing and contemplating upon it, of what? Shastrasya Guru Vakyasya. Shastram is that which is coming from the stream which is called Veda. So any, any study or uh, knowledge which is coming from Vedas can be taken as Shastra. These Shastras are, are of many types. We, we have discussed earlier also. We have Vedangas, we have Darshanas and all these Shastras when they are, they are seen with Satya Buddhi when they are seen that this is the ultimate truth and that is called as Shraddha and this Shraddha is leading to Samadhi and Samadhi is nothing but the other name for Moksha in uh, uh, Yoga Darshanam. And the other thing, Sampradaya, Guru Vakyam is nothing but the Sampradaya. You might not find a Shastra which is prescribing certain Anushthanas but it is coming from Sampradaya tradition when a sadhaka is following that tradition because it is told by his guru parampara, then that is also treated as shraddha and that shraddha will also lead to uh, moksha marga. That shraddha is also very much essential in moksha marga. And there is one another sutra, Ishwara Pranidhana Dva. Soon after that, so shraddha virya smriti samadhi Pragnapurvaka Itaresham is the 20th Sutra and soon after that, uh, in 23rd Sutra, we have this Ishwara Pranidhana Dva. So this is the other prescription that uh, Patanjala uh, Maharshi is giving us to attain Samadhi, which is Ishwara Pranidhanam. And Ishwara Pranidhanam is nothing but Bhakti. So in Purana Parampara, we have many stories and uh, and vratas which are which are uh, which are telling about bhakti but that bhakti is told as ishvara pranidhana in yoga sutra so the uh, rajamartanda vyakhyana by bhojavritti it is saying that pranidhanam bhakti visheshaha sarvakriyanam tatra arpanam see all when you are uh, when you are dedicating all your action to one particular concept that is called as pranidhanam. So, Ishware pranidhanam, Ishwara pranidhanam means when you are giving away every kind of an action and its, uh, and its purpose to that Ishwara that is called as Ishwara pranidhana. And this Ishwara pranidhana is told in another way in Viveka Chudamani Swaswarupanusandhanam bhakti ritya vidhiyate because so Ishwara is not very much different from you. Ishwara is actually yourself only. So to, to define Ishwara, 
in Patanjala Yoga Sutra, we find this sutra. Klesha karma vipaka shayaihi aparam rushtaha purusha visheshaha ishvara. So the chetana or the, or, or, or the entity which is responding, which don't have klesha karma vipaka ashaya, uh, this kind of an entity who is responding is taken as ishvara and he is nothing but yourself. That is why they are giving this definition. Swaswarupanu sandhanam bhakti. See, so bhakti and shraddha are two very important and extensively uh, dealt with concepts in Puranas and also other traditions which have a, a parampara impact, not direct but indirect impact on moksha. It is very essential for us to understand what is bhakti and what is uh, uh, tatra, um, shraddha to actually um, focus towards moksha marga. So that is what I want to say today. So I want to once again thank everyone to give for giving me this opportunity and I will take this opportunity to once again remember my Guru Parampara. Om. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat, Param Brahma, Tasmai, Shri, Guru Venama, Harihivo. Thank you very much, uh, Surin Naranji, for a wonderful and uh, very clearly articulated presentation, uh, which not only uh, clearly presented the place of uh, bhakti and uh, shraddha in the yoga marga, but also given overview of where the yoga darshan itself is placed in the larger uh, scheme of Bharatiya Vidya Parampara. Uh, I think it is uh, especially important, uh, your presentation was in presenting the fact that because nowadays there is a belief that the path of yoga does not involve any element of bhakti. I mean, the bhakti in the yoga marga may be not same as, for example, uh, um, Devata Archana or a, or a Bhakti Yoga in the in the Vaishnava Parampara that we see, but still it is a unique manifestation which is Bhakti itself. So this is a so we can say that all the Bhakti whatever we are following right now in Purana Parampara as can be uh, having these uh, attributes to it. So we can do the samanvaya of this definition to the uh, regular Bhakti. Uh, it is a different flowers of the same tree. So different manifestations of the same tree. Uh, so this is a very important takeaway uh, for me also that uh, in the yoga, in the path of yoga also, bhakti is inevitable. Ishwara Pranidhana is inevitable. Yes. Thank you again, uh, Surinayanji.